Hello, this is R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube tech guy. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Mobile Weekly slash Mobile Q&A. We go over all the latest news that happened during the week of mobile and tech and answer your questions live. If you have a question you want to ask, just ask it in the comment section down below and I will answer it before the end of the show. All right, guys, it is that time. It is CES week. Long awaited by me for sure. You guys know I've been waiting for this and yes, there's been a lot of issues with it and a lot of things going on. Um, CES is still going ahead in Las Vegas. They did cut it one day short. Uh, some companies did bail out. However, some of the biggest companies that actually do worthwhile announcements are still going and that's Samsung, LG, and they have already started announcing some of the stuff early to let us know what's going on. However, we do expect to see a lot of coverage at CES when we go. We're gonna probably see Asus, Lenovo, lots of different companies. Let me know which company's booth you want me to check out. There are gonna be a lot of big ones out there. So I'm very curious to see what we're gonna learn and what we're gonna see as obviously we'll be some of the only ones really covering it in person and getting to see some hands-on demos uh, that we get to see there live. So without further ado, let's get started with some of the announcements from Samsung and LG that have started to kick off. Now I can't wait, oops, that's how much I'm making on Amazon. Don't know why that uh, was the wrong one, but let's go ahead and see. Yes, that's how much day sales I made on Amazon, two bucks. <laughs> Buy more stuff from Amazon, from my links. <laughs> uh, but anyway, this are the announcements. So the first big announcement is going to be that the Samsung new TVs, the 4K and 8K models, are going to now do gaming, or just screens in general, with 144 hertz. They are the first ones that have announced this. However, I would say we might hear some more news in the next coming days. So just wait for that. So that is big though, because we are getting again, a faster uh, refresh rate. So this should be really, really good for gaming, uh, definitely. Now they are also adding a lot to the gaming functionality, which we'll go over in a second. But overall, that's one of the biggest announcements is that they're gonna be faster refresh rate. You're also gonna have some NFT displays because that's the end thing right now and Samsung is trying to get in on it and a share play, which if you and your friend happen to have newer Samsung TVs moving forward, uh, basically you can guys can watch something at the same time built into the TV. Now, other apps already do that, such as Netflix and Disney Plus, you can actually watch group share play kind of thing. So they have that around already, but that's one thing that is coming for right now. There's also some additions to the micro LED line. Now, if you don't know micro LED, micro LED is uh, the future technology that is supposed to blow OLED out of the water in terms of not only having its true blacks, but being much brighter, more accurate, more vibrant, everything basically across the board, but it's still only for the super wealthy. However, it is getting a small addition this year, and that is an 89 inch display i know i know tiny tiny i mean way smaller than the 99 inch and the 110 inch other uh micro led uh frames out there but the idea is that we're getting closer uh ever so slightly to affordable <laughs> a micro led although again i still think that'll be years away as this technology is still very expensive and it'll take time for it to go down as it goes down in price, I think it'll obviously go uh, lower in cost as all of this technology has uh, done in the past with screens. Um, and the frame is now getting a high-end matte finish so that that's a really cool feature just because we can now basically, you don't have to worry about it being outside. Obviously the frame is meant to be in like a living room that's very bright and the way that's designed. So that's how it's really designed to be. So obviously a matte finish uh, sounds like it'll go good with it just because obviously probably people were complaining that, you know, the regular TVs are gonna have a more glossy finish. However, with a matte finish, you aren't gonna have as strong of a brightness uh, on there usually. So I'm very curious to see how these will be and we'll probably see them in person uh, at our CES coverage in two days. So uh, make sure to subscribe to catch that. All right. Now let's get into gaming. So Samsung is getting more and more into gaming with these TVs. And the first big news is going to be 
their cloud gaming. So basically they are going to have built in apps now for different cloud gaming services, such as GeForce Now, such as Stadia. I'm sure Xbox isn't too far behind. So you're gonna to start to get all of these gaming cloud stream services, just so you know, hey, your TV can run this. How well will it run it? We'll have to wait and see, because uh, that is the overall thing. I mean, these don't have the fastest processors in them. Now, all you do technically have to do is pull data, but still, I've seen definitely things stumble on these services on Stadia, on GeForce Now. So I'm very curious to see how it'll do. It all depends on the Wi-Fi chip and how close you are to Wi-Fi with this TV. So very curious to see how it'll go, but again, TVs aren't known for having the best Wi-Fi chips. Sometimes if you have a TV with a Wi-Fi chip and then you put like a Google TV or a Roku or something else in it, they might actually have a better Wi-Fi chip in it to get a better signal. So we'll have to wait and see how this does, but it is something that Samsung is really getting into. They wanna get more and more into the gaming universe. And of course we just discussed their new TVs will be 144 Hertz refresh rate. So they're really getting towards gamers with this. And then we have other news, and this one is pretty exciting for me. It is Samsung's new smart monitors. Now I'm hoping these aren't all of them because these are two announcements, and I'm hoping for a third that is like the combination of these two, but bigger. All right, so two 32 inch monitors here, and the first one is the M8. Now, the smart monitors, the M7 series, really kind of are the best monitors I recommend for any non-gamers out there. Basically, it's a monitor and a TV kind of all in one. Not only that, but you have Office 365 built into the monitor. You can connect a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse to it and type up with Office without having a laptop or desktop connected to it. That's really cool. Then you also have apps. So there's so many times on my monitor when I just wanna watch YouTube and I don't want anything else on the monitor, I would love to have the monitor have a built-in app because regular YouTube web browser isn't as good as the app version. So a lot of times I really wish it would be an app instead. That is where the smart monitor comes in. You can have apps just to watch YouTube, Disney+, Plus, Netflix, all of these regular apps that you have on your TV, you have on this monitor. But they are adding a couple of things to it. First and foremost, a magnetically connected webcam, which is kind of cool uh, that you can get a webcam with the monitor. That's pretty cool and just to see this uh, little add-on. Um, and this of course will work with Duo. I'm sure it'll also work with Microsoft Teams and other things later on, but out of the box, it's gonna come uh, built in working with uh, Google Duo. So that's a really cool thing to see again, just that more ability to do everything with just a monitor without even connecting a laptop or a desktop or anything like that into it. Just a monitor has all of these smarts. I think that's really cool besides obviously being a really good monitor. Then we also have the new Odyssey Neo G8. Now, we did cover on uh, Newegg's uh, YouTube channel, I did cover the Neo G9, amazing monitor. It's the upgrade of my monitor, it's three years newer. Um, and that one is just phenomenal. It's also 2,500. It's a 49 inch mini LED uh, monitor. This one is going to still have the mini LEDs, the 240, for, uh, 240 Hertz refresh rate all in a 32 inch version. So it's basically getting everything from the G9 Neo in a much smaller package. We'll have to wait and see how much this one costs. But overall, I'm really glad to see a much smaller version of this getting a really good quality. Now, I just want this kind of smart functionality in a 49 inch. They already are getting into it with the 43, but man, if I just had that smart functionality, in one that's a 49 inch, oh, that would be perfect. Hopefully that will be one announcement that hasn't been announced yet at CES, but that is something from Samsung as well with these two new monitors. Then we also have a funky new technology and I wanted to clarify this because I feel like a lot of people are gonna jump to conclusions like, wait, does that mean we're gonna be able to get this with smartphones and other things? So. Samsung's new monitor, uh, new remote uh, is going to not only power through solar panels, 
which mine currently does. So mine was the Samsung TV from last year. And it was the first remote that they uh, said, not only can you recharge this with the regular type C USB, but we're also gonna put a solar panel on the back. So because it needs such little power, this will be able to never need to charge with your solar panel on the back. Now, that being said, they're also going to add another really eco charging thing, which is your router sends waves, right? These are, these are five gigahertz wave, 2.4 gigahertz waves. So these waves are just always going constantly. So what this remote is going to be able to do is actually take some of those waves and convert it into energy. Now, this hasn't been the first time this technology has been around, but this is probably the biggest electronic that's ever utilized it, simply because it, it's not very much energy, if you can imagine, but these signals are always being constantly sent. So it's essentially, okay, well, let's take some of this signals, this very little waves and actually charge the remote with it. I think it's more of a proof of concept to gain the technology and know how to use it to possibly be able to power other things later on. You might be able to power, uh, say, their uh, tags. You know, those tags are very, very low energy efficient um, tags. So that could be powered in the future with the same kind of technology. So I truly do believe this is Samsung's first step into doing this, but I wanted to explain this is for very, very low energy. Um, the, this technology does not, is not able to in any shape or form charge something that requires a lot of energy. Just want to clarify that, uh, because it will not be able to do it. Um, in, in anything that drains as quick as something like a smartphone or a smartwatch or anything like that, anything that basically doesn't have a month's worth of battery, you're not going to find that technology being able to charge it. So just wanted to clarify it, but yeah, letting you know. All right, then we get to LG and their first announcement. So their first announcement is a really cool one. So this is an evolution of the LG Gram and gaming laptops from LG. So this is basically a Gram size kind of laptop. It's obviously gonna be a little bit thicker, but still under five pounds, I believe. Um, and it's gonna get all of all of the stuff you rarely get from RAM, but they're throwing in an NVIDIA RTX 3080. So that is really cool because it's an RTX 3080. It's not even like a 3070, 3060, 3050. We are talking about a 3080. I really am curious on this laptop, really curious to see everything about it. I want to see it in person. I don't know if it's gonna be a barrel plug or if it's gonna be the first one of its kind to have a type C with the new up to 240 watt standard that um, is supposed to be released this year for type C. But I mean, you are talking about just such, such a lightweight. And it's, it's very curious to see how this will be overall. Like I, I just can't wait to see it. So, oh, uh, so sorry, it wasn't under five pounds, under six pounds. So 5.8 pounds, 930 uh, watts. Um, so I'm just, I'm so curious to see how this does in terms of charge. I am very excited because obviously it's a new processor and this gets up to 32 gigs of RAM, which is a requirement for my daily driver. So I'm not going to lie. I am going to be looking into this one very much so for multiple reasons. One of the fact that if I could actually get this as my daily driver, this is a possibility for me. This is a legit possibility of me replacing my laptop with this one. So very, very excited to see how this one goes. And let me know your guys' thoughts in the comment section down below. Lightweight gaming laptops are something that is just, it's, it's a new possibility in the next two years, and I am so here for it. All right, then LG also has shown off a new, very interesting uh, display called the Dual Up Monitor. 
And this is a really funky looking monitor, but I'm here for it because I would totally rock two of these, put them side by side and have a square essentially. And it just really is cool. So the whole idea is you have two 16 by nine inch monitors on top of each other essentially. And it's really kind of cool. It's, it's a really cool concept. It's 16 by 18, again, two 16 by nine monitors on top of each other. 28 inch monitor technically uh so very very curious to see how it is what you guys think about it because i think it's i'm here for it i i i think this is so interesting and again i i, th I could see myself doing a workflow like this where you're editing and you see the big version of it love that kind of stuff i am here for it i i, I definitely could see myself utilizing this kind of monitor so very excited for the possibilities that this one definitely has to offer. Very curious on that one. All right, and then we have to go into some of the non-CES news, but that is going on right now. So this was a really big one, um, and I wanted to clarify for you, again, not getting into politics because there could be some politics in this shortly, uh, but Verizon and AT&T have declined to delay their uh, band uh, infrastructure uh, because they are going to do it according to what the French regulations have uh, doing right now with their 5G. Now, you might be wondering, well, 5G's been out for a while now. Da, 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 da. Well, here's the thing. Most 5G right now is not mid-band. There's either low band like T-Mobile and AT&T have, and there's high band like mainly Verizon has. So that is most of the internet 5G right now. However, Sprint was the only one that really had a mid-band, which of course then was bought by T-Mobile. So T-Mobile has the most 5G by far because it has low band, which isn't that much faster, but it's more about consistent connection. And then you have the mid-band, which is a lot faster. Like it's a lot faster than Verizon and AT&T can offer right now. And that is why they do not want to delay it. They do not want to delay doing the mid-band because they are falling behind and T-Mobile has had a two-year lead on them with mid-band 5G. And they, they are hurting when it comes to 5G. They are really hurting. They need this to be able to start rolling it out. Well, here's the problem. Um, there have been talks of um, 5G mid-band interfering with some systems that are still reliant on it and there have been counter things and all this kind of stuff there's a lot of stuff going on with it basically again t-mobile is really the only one that is currently involved in it but again what at and at and and verizon have said is they're going to take the safer approach followed by the same infrastructure that uh, France has put for their 5G so that it doesn't affect their existing bands and do it in a specific way. So because of that, they are going to roll it out still. We will see if there's any issues or anything like that. Uh, one of the main big ones uh, is certain, and it's not everything, so I don't want to create a panic or let people know about, but certain things in the cockpit affected. So why that is obviously very important is because of the fact that it would more be that phones that have the receiver in it inside of an airplane could cause some issues. Of course, people have always been told to use airplane mode and then they were like, oh no, you don't need to put on airplane mode anymore. Well, I will tell you that this will more than likely bring back airplane mode requirements uh, in airplanes if this uh, does move forward in this way. So we will have to wait and see, but that's just letting you know, again, some of the updates on that. All right, and then we want to talk about something else that's new that we were going to get announced at CES, but it was announced a little bit beforehand, and that is <coughs> that... Samsung's new PCIe 5.0 solid state. So basically it's, it would be in the same kind of slot that a graphics card goes into, but underneath that is where they had it here. 
They tested it out in two different ways. They broke a world record by doing over 28,000 gigabits per second with the graphics card out, so it had no funnel to go down. In a regular system with the graphics card, however, they are still getting over 13 gigs per second. This is insane. This is, I mean, this is faster than M.2, which is the current fastest SSD until this came out, right? So it, it's, it's, I don't think it's gonna take over right away. I don't think, it, think this will be a slow moving process. Like again, this will not become like the mainstream standard till possibly, if at all, till three or four years down the line. But 13 gigs per second. Woo, that is sexy. Um, that is just so awesome uh, to see how it will really move and how fast this really goes. I'm here for it. PCIe Express 5.0, of course, just came out with Intel's new 12th gen, uh, which I covered on Newegg. Again, if you want to follow me on Newegg, I go more into PC stuff there. Um, that is really such a big thing that they have unlocked this new form. They were gonna get on motherboards. We're gonna get on more things now. Again, I do not see it becoming the standard for a while now. I think M.2 has pretty much taken that thing in terms of laptops and desktops. M.2 is now the current standard of SSDs and they're still pretty fast. Not 13 gigs fast, but still pretty fast. So yeah, really curious to see how much overall this will be. And I'm very scared about how much this will cost. But we'll have to wait and see. I just wanted to let you guys know that though, that was world record that just got broken. So pretty exciting. All right, guys, that was the news for today. If you guys have any questions you wanna ask, just ask it in the comment section down below and I will answer it before the end of the show. All right. So really cool stuff. I can't wait to see all of it. Uh, but yeah, Samsung is going to be the king of DDR5 overclocking like their DDR4 uh, B die. Um, Samsung is killing in DDR5 because they've been doing it for a while now in mobile. So mobile's had DDR5 for a while now. Uh, it's moving on to DDR6 actually in the near future. So Samsung is the main component maker of that. Uh, it makes most of the RAM for most phones, including iPhones, including, you know, every phone basically out there. They are one of the biggest manufacturers of, of RAM in that space. So it's, it's really going to be interesting to see just as we evolve into DDR5 RAM, how quickly that goes. And now again, I mean, they've been the king of uh, M.2 storage, in my opinion, for a while now. Everyone was waiting for them for PCI Express 4. Um, and now with PCI Express 5 kind of showing it's, it's just, or sorry, I said PCI, uh, PCI Express, uh, 5 is, uh, the new standard. And then, uh, gen four, um, M.2s, uh, have been doing very well in their recent launch. Obviously I got one, I got a Western digital one. It was the first one, Western digital black, uh, for mine, uh, PlayStation. So that was the first thing that I could install that actually was able to take it. All right. Uh, Ricky, your thoughts on the Xiaomi 12 Pro? It looks promising. I have not looked into it. I am, again, I just, I, I know I need to be more involved in Xiaomi. I just haven't really looked into it that much. So I need to, I, 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 for, sure, I for sure need to check on it more, but let's see what it is. So, All right, so it's a 50 megapixel main camera, 4,600 battery, eight to uh, 12 gigs RAM, Snapdragon 8 uh, Gen 1. So it's one of the first ones with that one in it. And that is a really, really impressive part of it. Um, really good cameras. It looks like overall um, you have, again, not the best ultra wide camera. I don't know why, people don't concentrate more on the ultra wide camera. Like I really want a better one, uh, but the sensors look good. The focus is awesome. Uh, the front camera looks good. A little small sensor, but still good. 
And yeah, look, I mean, looks cool. Uh, I just, I would have to see how it actually is gonna be when it comes out. I don't know if Xiaomi, I don't think Xiaomi is going to CES as well. A lot of uh, Chinese manufacturers specifically opted not to go because they would be delayed a month. So because of all the protocols right now, um, basically anyone coming from China has to quarantine two weeks before coming in, and then they have to quarantine two weeks before going back. So obviously it just doesn't make sense for people to come from outside of the US uh, in a lot of Asian countries because of that, but namely China, because they are one of the most strict on their policies for going in and coming out because of everything between. Um, so yeah, so because of that, it really is interesting to see how this is gonna go overall. So yeah. um, let's see. Everyone, I can't remember which helium miner you recommend. Uh, can you tell us again? I don't remember which uh, Mobile Weekly you talked about it last time. Okay, so there are a lot of helium miners out there, um, but it all more so matters on which one you can get the quickest right now. Because most helium miners, if you're getting the standards, which are Bobcat, Nebra, all these different manufacturers, um, you are waiting a long time, a long time before you get it. So the one that I recommend right now, I'm even going to give my uh, buddy Jimmy his promo, the link for it right now, um, is the uh, Mint Miner. And that's because they have drops at least once to twice a month. And with these drops, it's limited, so you're not guaranteed to get it. But for those who do get it, you get it in like a week. So you get it right away. So that one is one that I recommend for that reason. It's all about how quickly you can get it. That's what's gonna matter the most. So that is the first one that I recommend in terms of it. Um, I, had, I got the gold one, it's working fine. Um, I've had pretty much uh, the old one, uh, which was the Rack Miner, which uh, that, that literally was my first miner that I ever got back in March, I think it was, or April. Um, so that was my first one, OG one. And I've, you know, I've set it up at different houses. I'm literally, when I go to Vegas, I'm gonna set it, it one up at my aunt's house uh, to again, hopefully, I, I, I've told you guys no secret. I'm hoping that I could save up enough money uh, to help with the down payment on a house uh, with all the money that I get from this mining. So that's my goal for it, right? Um, so yeah, so that one is the one I would recommend for that reason. If you just want to get into helium, that is the miner that does drop shipments. So if you subscribe to their newsletter, you will hear about the next drop shipment. And again, typically they do two to three every month. Okay, the next one though, is definitely the future as of right now. And that is FreedomFi. So FreedomFi is more expensive. Uh, these are going to be a thousand, I believe, or a thousand five hundred, I forget. But the wait list you're talking, if you get on it, you're, going, you're waiting at least three to six months at this point. Uh, so what this is, is you get a miner and then you get a cell phone tower. A little, little, little bitty cell phone tower. It's not big, uh, but let me get, uh, show you guys just so you can see it. Now, this one is the one that is just, it's everything basically. This is going to give you more rewards at a quicker pace than a regular miner would. So this one is the one that I would recommend uh, overall, but you're not gonna get it. Like, I think the wait list I'm on, uh, which I got it the last time it dropped, uh, which was in December or November. Um, and so I got this so far, this is the miner. So it's just a basic regular miner. Good, very powerful, newer chip, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I have this right now, 
but I don't yet have the 5G tower and I don't know if they have a picture of it. Um, I know if here, if I type in setup, it has an option for, ah, oh, dang it. Uh, hmm. I can't, I can't find the um, actual unit, but it's basically like a little, it's like this white thing right here, but it's not connected to anything, but that is essentially what you're connecting to. And that's a 5G tower you will be connecting to your home. This is, th this is like regular 5G towers. Uh, but it's a little, it looks like a router, basically. It looks like a router. Um, Freedom Fi, let me type in 5G modem. I just want to see if I can find an image of it for you guys so you can see. But it looks, it looks just like a little tower. Here it is. There it is. So this is it, this little one right here, this uh, tower is, uh, there it is, there you go. So I have this already, and this is what I'm waiting for. This is basically the thing that's going to give you a lot more helium uh, for mining. But again, this combo costs about a thousand or a thousand five hundred, I forget off the top of my head. Um, I think a thousand, I think a thousand um, is what it cost, and that is for the miner, which is just a regular miner. And then once you attach this to it, it becomes a 5G router. So yeah, there you go. Okay. Um, I went to Best Buy yesterday and they showed me a similar one. Which one are you talking about, Daniel? Which, uh, was it a similar one to what? The Waves uh, is what Apple been talking, trying to do in their phones. Yeah, it's not gonna happen in their phones. It's not gonna happen. It's too, that technology is too uh, far. Ricky, what are your thoughts on the current state of YouTube after they remove the dislike counter? I don't like it. Uh, I, I do agree with the, with the main sentiment that uh, the dislike um, counter uh, is important because that is the quickest way to immediately give your feedback uh, to a video. I think it's very important for that. And here's the thing, it's stupid in a lot of ways because they got rid of it because, you know, people were, you know, I guess buying dislikes essentially and really attacking um, people that way. They can still attack them. They can still attack them. The dislike button is still there from my eyes as, an, as a creator. I, on the back end, can see how many dislikes a video gets. So this doesn't go away because you're hiding it. it it's, 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 I think it's such a horrible, um, implementation that they did that, that didn't make sense. Like if you would have asked a creator, I feel like your answer would have easily been received. Like it would have easily been received. I unfortunately think it's too much to do with advertising and um, that's never a good way to go. So yeah. We all know specs for the S22 Ultra upsetting. Samsung dropped the SD card support. A lot of customers need it now. Um, they're forced to buy larger storage and pay extra. I agree. I completely agree with that statement. I, I am one of them that I um, have to buy a bigger storage. I have to buy a 256 or more than likely 512 version of my phone each time I get it now. And it's very annoying to me and I don't like it. Um, so yeah, that, that is one thing that I've had to deal with each time. And I'm not a fan of Samsung doing this at all, um, but um, it's it's something that they were the last holdout of the SD card um, in the big three, right? iPhones never had it, Google never had it. And you know, LG went away uh, OnePlus is out there, um, but it's it's something that unfortunately I felt was like going to always happen. And uh, Samsung went away from it and I don't like it. I don't, I, 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 I like the SD card because I can add a lot of storage on my tablet. I have uh, the Samsung Tab S8 Plus, or sorry, Tab S7 Plus. 
Uh, <laughs> um, but this one uh, definitely is so awesome for the fact that it has a micro SD card because I got the 128 gig version built in, but I added a 512 uh, SD card. So that was a much better solution in my opinion. Um, I'll go for the 512 storage, yeah. Do you think uh, Mark Zuckerberg's plan for the metaverse will work? He's throwing a huge amount of money at it. Well, he threw a lot of huge amounts of money at the Facebook phone. So obviously, so did Amazon, mind you, the Fire, Fire phone, if you forgot those. Um, so yeah, no, I, I, I think this metaverse thing for me, I don't see it at least. I could be completely wrong. It could be completely behind the times. I just like, it's not there yet. It's a possibility down the line of having a virtual world where everyone kind of goes to. Interesting prospect. But in terms of, are we even close? No, no, I don't think at all. I think it's a new word uh, that, that basically is getting people's attention. You know, people don't know about a lot of things that are going on right now from crypto to NFTs, the metaverse, to buying land, buying products in these metaverses that are being created. And it, it really is a very careful line you have to walk right now because all of this is a bubble, of course. NFTs are completely a bubble. Uh, and when they pop is gonna be more of the question than if they pop. Um, so it's very curious to see how this all goes moving forward. Um, how much will the 5G be? Thank you. Will the new 5G be? What do you mean, will the, how much will the new 5G be? I'm, I'm curious, let me know what you meant by that. Um, do you know the easiest way to clear your cache on your smartphone? Thank you. Uh, it depends on the phone. Phones technically do it uh, by themselves. Um, on, on iPhone, I don't believe there is a way to clear it. On Samsung phones, I want to say they're the easiest ones because you literally just go to clear cash in your storage. Um, on Google phones, I've never tried it. Again, a lot of these are made to do it by itself, so you don't have to. Um, so yeah, on Google, you can't necessarily do it, it looks like. They do have a trash, which basically if you tap that, you can clear that whole section. Uh, but that is it, it looks like. It doesn't look like they have a uh, way to clear the cache itself. Um, so yeah, some phones, it's, it's not a particular thing that all phones allow you to do, just like um, most people don't know how to do it on even computers. Uh, it's very easy once you know, but it's just not, it's something that phones try to take care of themselves although they don't always do it. I remember a couple months ago, my boss on his iPhone uh, had the great other, uh, which is just your cache. Your cache isn't being cleared. And that is a problem that iPhones have, is that they will literally build up an other storage and your other takes up all your storage just because it can't clear out the cache. Um, the best thing to do is to uninstall and reinstall apps that you know have taken a lot of storage in the past. So if you used to download a lot of videos onto YouTube, maybe clear that app uh, of its clash and its data or uninstall and reinstall, um, and that will help out your cache overall on your phone. Um, Ricky, uh, you are still rocking the full three as your daily driver. Yes, yes I am, right here. Until I get the S22 Ultra, I am leaving the full three then. Uh, if yes, why, uh, and not the ultra, I remember you did not like the camera on the two. Uh, yeah, I don't like the camera. I don't, I, I, I again, I rarely take photos with this. Um, but because I is my second daily driver since October, I've had the pixel pixel takes phenomenal cameras. It takes care of all my photos and video needs. So I am very happy with that. That basically takes the place of this phone for taking photos and videos. So because I carry two phones, I have kept the fold. I truly do believe if I did not have a second phone, I would not have kept the fold. Uh, I have since uh, gave the 
uh, S21 Ultra to my brother uh, because his phone was falling apart. So I ended up taking that one from him and I'll trade that in uh, for my S22 Ultra. But yeah, that's uh, how I'm seeing it as. Um, when do you think the Tesla phone will come out? If it comes out, we'll I'll wait and see. I'm not convinced that it's definitely coming out. It, it could totally, but I just, I don't know. Uh, I've, I've seen Tesla promise and not deliver so many times on a lot of things. So I am waiting to see what happens there. Uh, but I just, I don't see it being groundbreaking. I could totally be wrong and I hope I'm wrong. The more competitors we get in this sphere, the more that it drives innovation. Um, and I hope, I really do hope that if Tesla does come in, they innovate something. Um... Yeah, and then what are your view on the prospect of a Tesla phone? Again, I, as of right now, I, I believe it's nothing but a rumor. Uh, if it does happen, great, but I just, I don't believe it's true yet. We'll see. Again, Apple's been working on a car forever, for over five years plus. Now Apple's been working on a car, and we're not going to see it till another five years at the soon, at the earliest. So let's wait and see. Um, what is your, oh yeah, uh, when the tablets 8 and 8 Ultra coming out, they are were originally supposed to be announced uh, with the S22s at uh, Samsung Unpacked in February, I think 10th or 14th, I forgot what, where, uh, when it's coming out. Or sorry, when the announcement is. Uh, so they were supposed to be announced there, but they might be delayed by two weeks and come out um, and announce to MWC. So we'll have to wait and see how that goes. Uh, MWC is the first week of March, I believe this year. Is there any way to run any app on the Z Fold 3 cover screen? Um, I don't know of any app you can't run on the cover screen. Like, I don't know any app that you can't run on this front screen. I, at least I haven't experienced it. It looks weird sometimes. Um, but yeah, I can't think of any app that you can't run on it. So if there's one that you haven't been able to run on it, let me know. Um, oh, sorry. I, 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 for some reason I read the Fold 3. The Flip 3, no, no, you cannot. It's not a full functioning screen in that way. Uh, I'm sure there's a hack that people have probably done by now for modding, but no, as far as I know, you can't do any app on the uh, cover screen. Sorry, I did not read that correctly. Um, yeah, the dislike button is still visible for creators. It doesn't really change much anyway. Yep, doesn't really change much. Uh, what is the best Z Flip 3 case in your opinion? Um, I did like the grip case uh, from Incipio, uh, so I was a big fan of that one. I love the spec case. It's one of the only cases that's actually linked together. So it, it just, it shows the, the attention to detail and the quality. So spec has a really great clear case if you want a clear case. Um, and Samsung cases are very nice, the, the leather and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think, yeah, that's the one I got my mom. She, I gave her the Flip 3, and I want to say it was like the clear case from Spec that uh, she ultimately put on there. If I remember off the top of my head, but yeah. But the Incipio grip case and Spec clear case are the first ones to come to mind, at least. Is it safe to replace the Z Flip 3 screen protector? I would say so, yes. I did uh, replace both of my screen protectors um, on, the, on the Flip 3 and on the Fold 3. On the Flip 3, mine has been perfectly fine. It's never had an issue. This is the glass screen protector from Whitestone Dome Glass. Um, they do also make a film version though that's a better quality film than the one that comes with it. Um, so here's the thing you should know about uh, Samsung's warranty for it. Because a lot of people, uh, I, I answered this question on the video for the Whitestone Dome Glass Flip 3. Um, but basically, they it, it is not breaking your warranty if you take the film off. However, if you damage the screen when you take it off, they will not cover that. So that's the whole thing. Is that now, I don't know how you would damage it unless you're just like ripped it off or something like that. If you just take it off slowly, you're not gonna damage it. 
Uh, but yeah, so that's that's um, kind of the ins and outs that I feel about for the screen. Uh, I love the Whitestone Dome glass. It's been so much better feeling. I remember how crappy it felt uh, with that film on there, and it feels so much better with the glass uh, from Whitestone. Um, how much faster will 5G be compared to the 5G we have right now? So if you compare the low band to mid band 5G, you're talking much, much faster. Low band 5G, uh, I think maxes out at about 90 megabits per second typically. So still faster than most home internet, uh, but again, about 90 is where it maxes out at and relatively anywhere between 20 and 60, I would say is where most 5G low band uh, stays at. However, uh, 5G mid band is about 100 to it's supposed to be an average of 100 to 200 megabits per second. It can go all the way up to about 500. So that's mid band. That obviously is way better than anything we have now and something I would definitely look forward to if we could get it um, more prominently. I mean, that would be literally replacing home internets and I would be the first one to jump on board. If you guys remember, I was one of the first people to test out the T-Mobile um, home internet uh, replacement. I tried, I tried to get rid of Spectrum, uh, but unfortunately the T-Mobile was not ready in my area. It just was very, very poorly at staying consistently connected. Um, yeah. 50 for today questions guaranteed uh, to bring all seven Dragon Balls, Infinity Stones, and uh, Redact Spider-Man spoilers. <laughs> A shameless plug. Thank you so much, White Storm, for always reminding me about my shameless plug of the week, and that is the 51st Day Questions app. It is a game that I created. It's really fun. You can get it on Android or iOS. Very simple, fun game to get on the Google Play Store or iOS App Store. You ask them a question, they ask you a question. Great time for a first date or a great just spending time with your significant other finding out what's going on inside their head, and it's a fun game, so you don't have to directly ask the question, you just get to find out what you want to know. 50 First Day Questions is in the description down below. Um, speaking of cash, um, is factory reset a good option for an older phone that is starting to get buggy with the battery life and storage, etc.? cetera? Uh, Rocket and S9 Plus. Um, so I don't think there was an S9 Plus Ultra, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was just S9 Plus. Um, but so yeah, what um, is it a good idea to speed up a phone? So it definitely will speed up a phone typically overall. Um, in terms of battery life though, not so much. Battery life has an expiration date. All of these lithium batteries have an expiration date. They have a certain cycle count that goes up and once it's up, it's done. So, which means you'll never get to 100% battery life again, you'll get to 90. And then I may, after another year or two, you'll get to 80. Then maybe after another year or two, you get to 70. And that is your max battery life. It does have an end date, and that is true with all lithium batteries until we get some better technology. Uh, but yes, that is true with all of them, um, that they're all like that. Uh, every single smartphone has the same kind of uh, battery technology. Um, mostly made by Samsung. Uh, so yeah, so uh, as of right now, um, this it will speed up your phone, but it won't really help in terms of battery life. So don't expect a huge improvement on battery life from that. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I've seen the hack, but not sure it's safe. Got it, so yeah, there is a hack for the Flip 3. I, again, once I gave it to my mom, I was kind of out of the Flip 3. I never really focused on it anymore. So yeah, kind of uh, curious to see how that'll go. What's the best gaming device, portable or not, for a beginner or a senior to start with? That is a very interesting question. Um, because I think that really depends on what kind of game. It just depends on what kind of game that I think you're really looking for. Because I think, you know, smartphone games are dead simple. Very simple. You download the games there for them, and I think they can play a game, right? So that's one form of gaming. Um, another option would be 
like old Super Nintendo games. Get them the uh, Super Nintendo um, Classic uh, that came out, what, two years ago? And that has 40 Super Nintendo games on there. Great fun. They don't go online. They can't mess anything up, really. They can just play the games uh, that would get them really into learning how to play games. Uh, platformers, first-person shooters, all that kind of stuff is there. Um, so you have that. Um, then you have, of course, things like the Nintendo Switch, which I would say is probably the easiest kind of gameplay to get into. Um, Family-friendly, safe, you know, you can get things like uh, fighting games, first-person shooter games, um, like Super Mario Kart, all that kind of stuff. So that adds a variety, too. So it depends on the gamer, but I think those three are good starting points from smartphones to Super Nintendo Classic to um, Nintendo Switch. I think those are uh, good starting points for sure. So, yeah. All right, guys, um, it looks like the questions are winding down and I do have to get going. My suitcase is right here and I still need to finish packing. I need to shave, didn't get to shave before this video. So I need to shave, get ready. And yeah, super excited just for this week. I, I feel like I need this kind of like re-spark, reinvigoration uh, towards tech. It's It's been a little difficult lately a um, little overwhelming and this isn't necessarily vacation because I'm working all week I'm working 12 hour days but it's a change of scenery that I think I need right now and I think should really get me back in the fun of it so yeah really excited for that guys um, I do apologize obviously I did not get to do uh, top smartphones of 2021 like I wanted to um, and it, again, it was just a lot of work that had to be done before this week and just needed to get it. So I'm going to try to knock out some videos before leaving for CES tomorrow. And hopefully those will go up tomorrow and, uh, actually just tomorrow and then, uh, do a lot of CES coverage. Uh, make sure to follow me at YouTube tech guy on all of social media platforms. So on Twitter, on Facebook and Instagram, all at YouTube Tech Guy. I will be posting a lot of stuff there, as well as, of course, on here as well. But a lot of stuff to see there. And I'm going to be doing most of the coverage for Newegg as well. So if you haven't subscribed to Newegg on YouTube, subscribe there because I will be on most of the coverage for CES as well. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys always tuning in. This has been R-I-C-K-Y, the YouTube Tech Guy.